man of the moment, the man of the match, the man who could bring victory to Pakistan and the man who stands between India and Britain. After winning the World Cup of 1983, we went on to win Asia Cup in 1984. It was followed by winning the World Championship of Cricket in 1985. We were en route to creating a cricketing dynasty. And then came that moment. India had always been an overwhelming presence in terms of victories over its across the border rival. There was a psychological barrier because we had not beaten India in Sharjah uh, before this game. And we were under a lot of pressure to beat India after having lost to them uh, consistently in the uh, last few years. Uh, so the pressure was gigantic. The game started on a batting friendly pitch. India batted first with Pakistan choosing to bowl. They're always butterflies, you know, no matter how many tests, how many wonders, how many years of cricket you played. When you play against India or India plays against Pakistan, both teams face tremendous tension. Gavaskar and Shrikant opened batting with Gavaskar playing a steady fiddle to a much more flamboyant play style of Shrikant. India got to its 50 with a stylish hook for a four on the onside. Meanwhile, Shrikant got his 50 in the second consecutive match in just 59 balls. After a 117 run partnership, Shrikant got caught trying to hit a third six on the spinner Abdul Qadir. Vinsakar batting third scored at a slower but steady pace. Together, they took the score all the way to 216 when Vinsarkar got out. All three starting batsmen had scored half centuries at this point. And Gavaskar, the linchpin, was still on the crease. Once Vengaskar got out, it was as if the floodgates opened. Wickets after wickets kept falling, with no one staying on the crease to support Gavaskar on the other hand. India went from 216 for 2 to 245 for 7 at the end of the inning. Still, 245 was a big total to chase. Even on a batting pitch, it would require a good start and dogged batting to chase the score down. However, it was not to be, as Pakistan lost its first wicket just at 9 runs. What was more devastating was the loss of Ramiz Raja, who was seen as the backbone of Pakistani batting order. Pakistan, falling to 39 for 2, kept on losing wickets at a fairly regular pace. The run rate had climbed to more than 6 which was a monstrous rate in that period. However, Javed Miyanda, who had walked in on number 4, remained a constant at one end, playing a steady but slow hand. He kept on trying to shore up the lines, at one point shouting that he just needs one player, just one player, to stand on the crease and he will make sure that we win. He was telling suddenly after the 6th or 7th wicket fill, he was just telling somebody in the world, I just want one guy to stand on with me, I'll do the match. I thought we were all thinking, what is this guy talking? Is he talking uh, through his hat or something? Because by the time the run rate also had climbed up, they were losing wickets. We thought, okay, he must be dreaming. However, with his steady playing, peppered with some classy shots, he single-handedly brought the score to 17 runs required of the last two overs. He needed 17 runs of the last two overs. And uh, Chetan had an over, Kapil had an over. 
So, I thought that uh, Kapil, who was the captain, must have decided that if I go for 6, 7 runs in this over and 10 or 11 runs are required in the last over, it's not going to be very easy. Because Chetan was also bowling well, he was bowling quick and bowling very good line and length. With the aim of increasing the run rate required in the last over, Kapil Dev took the second last over to himself, leaving 11 runs required in the last over with 3 wickets left. I was not expecting Kapil to call me up at that, that time because I was the junior most in the team. And uh, we had very senior guys actually playing um, in that game. But Kapil had a lot, 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 lot of confidence on me. And he called me for the last over and just told me, try your best. The gamble even seemed to pay off as the first ball led to a run out on the non-striker end. 10 runs required of 5 balls and 2 wickets to go. The second ball, however, was hit for a glorious four by Miandar, which brought the equation down to six runs in four balls. Even the third ball was about to go to four when it was fielded brilliantly within the ring by Roger Binney. Furthermore, it caused Miandar to be stuck on the non-striker's end as he watched the ninth wicket being clean bowled on the third ball, the second last ball. One wicket, five runs acquired, with Miyanda on the non striker's end. A perfect scenario for India. Tosif Ahmed did the only thing he could do touch the ball and started running. Azizuddin was standing on Madoff. The best fielder in the side back then had the ball in his hands. Both the batsmen at the middle of the pitch. All he had to do was throw the ball to Chetan Sharma and the match would have been over. However, he tried to go for a direct hit and the best fielder in the Indian side, standing 5 feet away from the stumps, missed. The match could have been won. Another shutdown of Pakistan. Just a usual day in the office for Indian team. But he didn't hit. And now, the last ball of the match. 4 runs, 1 ball. One wicket and Miandar batted. It's a Yorkerland ball and he was standing open chested. I could see him, he's standing open chested. I stopped in between, went back again, thought I should bowl a short delivery. Changed my mind. At the last strike, I changed my mind. I think so. Everything went wrong there because I changed my mind on the last strike. And that was too less a time for any bowler to change your mind at that time. Because I was so scared, because I never wanted to lose this match for my country. We have talked about moments and decisions and records, epic wins and comeback retreats, underdogs rising to the top of the world, and a new national sport taking shape. We have arrived at a moment in history. The last ball coming up, four runs required. See this is six, and Pakistan have won. Unbelievable victory by Pakistan, and Javed Miyadar, the hero of the moment. This is unbelievable. It's true that a loss doesn't mean much. But after this match, we played against Pakistan in Sharjah 15 times and lost 13 times. 
that World Cup winning team played against Pakistan in three more series after this, even outside Sharjah, and we lost them all. That same team with the same talent against the same opponents lost all of them. A cricketing dynasty interrupted. This was the effect of that one six. This was the ghost of Sharjah. A ghost who haunted Indian cricket for years to come. Just look at the crowd there. Miadav the Great, they chant. Miadav the Great. The young Chetan Sharma had to shoulder the burden of this defeat all by himself. But rather than boring down, he fought back and redeemed himself. To see how, watch our next video. This video is also available in Hindi and Marathi languages. Links are in the description. Thank you.